Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Alec here at Beyond Media Productions, and today we're going to be going over some basic Chroma King in Final Cut Pro. Now, this is going to be a basic tutorial. Uh, if you're a beginner, this is going to be great for you. If you're more of a veteran, then check out one of our more advanced tutorials. All right, so here we go. We're going to start in here. If uh, we're going to use the right click to import a file. If you don't know about importing files, check out one of the other tutorials, the basic ones on uh, importing uh, files. And uh, there's another one for exporting. Um, so here we go. We're gonna go uh, import file and we're gonna bring in uh, this clip here. It's called a Betsy. And this is from a shoot that I did uh, on a commercial a year ago, I think. And the way I'm gonna bring it in is, I could just drag this to the timeline, but I want you to get used to seeing some other ways because there's some other tutorials where we're gonna be moving really fast. And so um, I want you to just drag this over to the right where it says insert, overwrite, uh, with transitions, replace, uh, fit to fill, and superimpose, and drop this in the overwrite box, okay? And what that says, if there was another clip there, this would have overwritten it and just basically gotten rid of the other clip. But keep in mind that files are non-destructive. If you've worked with an audio program before, you know that it, just because you uh, don't see the clip doesn't mean it got erased. It just means that, you know, another clip is cut it off, but it's non-destructive. It's still there. All right. Um, so what we'd like to do now is uh, bring this over. Let's, let's reduce our screen size a little bit. It's a little big. We only see a head. All right, so this is our lovely spokesmodel, Betsy. She says, And the exceptional services we have to offer. One, action. Simply click on the video links to your... Okay, so it's still got a bit of the direction and stuff there. So let's hold Betsy right here and let's do some stuff. Now, she's lit pretty good. In fact, I, did, I lit this scene. Uh, it's a little hot, but uh, that's the way we wanted it. We want it really bright. She's got a nice highlight in her hair, her blonde hair and stuff. We wanted that to uh, really come out. And uh, the dress uh, was chosen because it was light. This was a business. Uh, it's actually for a, a doctor's, a dentist, actually, uh, clip. And so part of the real world training here is that, you know, we're using real clips for real jobs and showing you how to get it done fast. So this is what I'm going to do. This is the final cut. Now, I probably use final cut, maybe not to do the final king, but I would definitely check out things like backgrounds and stuff before I headed over to my real compositing software like After Effects or something, I would uh, literally do a chroma key here. You know, like as soon as I'm fun finished with a sh uh, shoot, I'll race to the studio, uh, dump out some, some of the footage and throw it up to see what we got, you know? Or I'll try to do a chroma key right there on set to see what we got. And uh, so this came out pretty good. It's a little hot, and uh, but here we go. Let's uh, double click it, uh, the clip right here. Let's double click this to bring it up into the work viewer here. And uh, let's add, let's go up to effects, come down to video filters and come down to key and one call chroma keyer. Okay. Now, if we go back up here to our tab in our work viewer, we see that it's been added right here at the top. Chroma Keyer. We're going to click that and hit voila. This is the Final Cut Pro Chroma Keyer from Final Cut 7, Studio 2, those kind of versions. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the right here. Now, let's look, talk about these controls. The first control here is the one that's going to pick the, the, the green that we want to key out. Now, if you look over here on this, you can see that there's various types of green. There's like... Uh, a darker green here and a kind of a hot green here and, and you want to light the screen as evenly as possible uh, but what I have a feeling is that like I said we're shooting really fast so what I'm going to do with this later is I'm going to mat this I'm going to put a mat around so we're not even going to have to deal with this stuff here okay but right now let's just do basic chroma king so we're going to take our eyedropper right here select that and we're going to go in here and pick some of the green and what you should do is you hold down, I believe it's shift, and you can keep picking, if continue to hold down shift, you can keep picking different types of green to get rid of. And if you notice, as you do it, uh, the saturation and luminous channels and the green channel are being adjusted accordingly, and they're basically widening to open up to allow more 
variations of the color green through uh, in order to key them out. So I'm going to hold down shift, pick the color key again, and just continue to 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 pick out green uh, parts here. Just a moment until I got it. Basically, she's looking fairly good. The, you know her. She's not surrounded. Now, there's some edge. And as I said before, those edges I'd probably deal with with a mat. But because this is just about basic chroma keying, and I want you to get it, uh, the understanding of what's going on, we're going to just do some things. So start, first, I'm going to open up the Lumina channel a little bit more, let in more of the highlights. And I'm going to do the same thing on the low end. So it's going to let in, it's going to actually darker green, things that are darker, it's going to get rid of that. I'm just opening the, the spectrum at which the green channels, you know, from light green to dark green, right? I'm trying to get all the light green to dark green and every color in between that green. All right, don't worry about that. That was just a drive. What a drive on the network. Uh, okay, so I'm going to open that one up. And as you see, as I do that, we start to get rid of some of that. Now, as you do this, what you want to do is Keep your eye on, mostly, I'm going to be honest with you, mostly what we will do is hair detail. You see this hair in here? This is what we don't want to lose. Anytime you see green screen that's done very poorly, you'll see that the hair, they start to chop into the hair. So let's back this off a little bit, reduce the screen size again right here to 50%. We're going to, I'm going to try to force this out, but it's not necessary. I could draw a mat which you'll see you have, uh, in another tutorial. Check out our mats. Uh, it's, I think it's a tutorial called, uh, it's about matting. And um, and we show you how to draw a mat around the person. So you don't really even have to deal with this. We're just going to cut it off. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and open up this Luma uh, saturation channel a little bit more to, to force that out. Okay. And I dare not go anymore. All right. All right, now. The edge thinness, you can look at, at at it as saying, it's almost like a, um, a matte choker, okay? When you pull it this way, it's going to uh, uh, kind of eat into the image a little bit. Uh, and you let it the other way, it's going to let out the image a little bit. Now, a better way to see this, because now it's all black here. We have no background, okay? That's basically nothing there. Um, that's not the blackness of an image. That's just blackness because there's just nothing there. I'm going to come over here and just, this is just things that I do in order to keep, you know, to know what's going on here. I can't just go by that. I'm losing hair. I can't see it. So I'm going to, uh, you know, these are two are uncoupled. If you look, don't know about uncoupling, look at the, uh, another tutorial I talk about uncoupling, um, uh, the different videos. And I'm going to bring this up to another channel right here. Now, after I do that, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to bring it a background image, okay? So <clears throat> I'm gonna right click, import, file, and let's see, let's see, green tutorial. Um, let's see, short clip. All right, so we have a couple of shots here. I got a law office and a more modernly looking, they say it's modern office, but it looks more like uh, something very weird to me. So let's choose this law office. So we bring this in. No, we don't wanna save this yet. And we're going to Take this law office photograph and place it under our clip. Whoop! Just a moment. We're going to get to that too. Um, right here, if you come down, make sure that you have your track here selected and then say overwrite, uh, it'll fall right into where it is. So this is a way of selecting the tracks that you want these tools to work with. All right, now, as we can see, we've got that green off to the side and up to the edges. But again, this would be matted. So, uh, but I'm going to go and crush it a little bit more. Let's see. Let's open up the wideness of the green. You know, it's, as you can see here, there's more green. So, obviously, there's more green we could eat into uh, before we start to lose uh, other colors other than green, uh, which may be your skin tones or jewelry or... Uh, even makeup, you know, that might be on the eyes could have green tint uh, in it. A, bl a, a blue eye makeup could start to look green. And before you know it, you people have holes in their eyes. So <laughs> be careful of that kind of thing. So we're going to keep opening this and widening this and trying to chew away more and more of that green that's surrounding her. And so it's, it's looking better and better. We do have a bit of spill here. Um, and 
So in order to fix some of this, I'm going to uh, thin out the edges. And I've, uh, I believe in this, we can push it all the way, almost all the way over. And then we're going to soften the edges. Now, immediately, you can see what's going on when we're eating into the image. And uh, later, I'm going to, uh, there's a tutorial that we have about <clears throat> pro keying in which we use multiple layers. And in fact, we eat into one of the images and really use that as a center image. And then we uh, use the outer image. If you can understand that there, there would be two images on top of each other of the same thing would uh, take care of the edge detail and the inner image is going to take care of the, um, the inner part, you know, the, which include the face and the inner torso and stuff like that. But that's on another tutorial about advanced, advanced keying. And it is part of our Break It Down series. So, um, you know, if you want to check that out here, I'll uh, show you that real quick. If we could, uh, could go there. Okay, so if you... Uh, if you could go here and look at our real uh, real world effects training uh, series, uh, break it down effects. It has serious serious breakdowns on King, and we use and that we use After Effects and some other programs. Uh, we show you really really how to key great. Okay, so later for that. Now uh, the last thing I want to do here <clears throat> is um, I'm gonna I am gonna soften like just a hair. I mean just one click here maybe. Just, just about like that, because we're losing a bunch of uh, of the detail, and we don't want to do that. Then Final Cut has this uh, weird thing called enhance, and it adds. It's it's almost like uh, if I was a cinematographer uh, and shooting uh, years ago, uh, you would use a um, in a color spectrum. You would use alternate colors or colors that were different from the other colors. So if you had green, you would add magenta. And that's an, a, a total opposite color, and it, and it should um, balance out the two and equal it out. Uh, so what they've added is this magenta, if you watch for a minute, um, this magenta line that uh, would pop up here. We can see it, magenta. There it is there. All right, so you see this. Uh, let me make it a little bigger so you can really see that. But you see that magenta? So that's just supposed to be the opposite. This is the opposite of green. And in fact, it is. But I don't recommend using that. I really don't. Yeah, um, this is something that, will, you know, is a little old. And that'll give, that, uh, right away, that'll give it away that you are, are not that good. Okay? So don't use that. <laughs> Let's, you know, that you're uh, just a beginner. Don't, don't use the edge uh, thing whatsoever if you can help it. I think just to get this not out the door, but to the back to the producer so they can pick out backgrounds because I, I wouldn't say that this is the keying that I would do as a finished product, but I would uh, do some keying like this in order to get a quick turnaround. Let's reduce the screen size here. And I would do this to do a quick turnaround so that the producer a lot of times wants to uh, pick out backgrounds or maybe, you know, they, they you know, the, it's not so, uh, everybody hasn't agreed on the background. Uh, maybe they want a logo in the background. Maybe they want an office like this in the background. They're not sure about it. So it's my job to suggest things. You know, I'm the editor. I'm supposed to be the guy who has all of the, uh, all of the fancy backgrounds and editing stuff. So yeah, I'll, I'll put it up with a couple of backgrounds. First, I'll have a conversation with the producer, ask him, what do you think you might like to have? How do you see it? Or maybe I'll suggest some things. And then I'll send them over a few short clips that have different backgrounds. And I'll use Final Cut to do it. I, I will, I'll say, well, there's no sense in going rendering and you know, super doing things. Because a lot of times when you're doing a key, the key that you do should, if you have access to the background, that actually helps you key better because you're able to bring the background in. And if, if you notice here, you see that there's lighting going on, right? Well, what if these lights were fluorescent and they were green? Well, wow, that, you know, the, it had a greenish tint. That would help. Or if this was a movie background or for whatever reason, that would really help some, some of this little, you know, haloing that we have here. But in this case, this king is good enough to send back to the producer to say, what do you think, Mr. Producer? You want to go with this background 
or should you know should we swap it out for something else because i'm ready to move on to the heavy lifting part of this job which is major keying for you know hours and hours of footage of it you know whatever needs to be done so there you have it a uh, quick keying job of our lovely hostess betsy uh in um, final cut pro and uh if you have any more questions Feel free to get on to the blog, you know, at uh, beyondmediaproductions.com. And, uh, you know, right here at the top, hit blog and send a message. Or you can actually reach us through any of the proc packages. If you go to one of the things, one of our uh, packages, like uh, Break It Down uh, Video Effects, you can uh, go right in here and uh, contact me through a comment or through the contact page. Right All right. Once again, this is Alex Murphy at Beyond Media Productions. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.